This is New York Nightly News with Chuck Scarborough, live on New York Nonstop. You know, we're talking about America's men and women serving overseas. Now, many are serving three, even four tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, separated from their family, their friends, for years. But the USO continues to bring a taste of home to our troops. And now it's using high-tech centers in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kuwait to bring them in a sense, into their families' homes. Here to tell us more about that is the president and CEO of the USO, Sloan Gibson. Welcome aboard. Thank you, John. Thank Before you we get into that, just, just just tell me what is the USO in a box? What is that? Uh, what we've been able to do is to create a mini portable USO center. All the things that a service member might find in a USO center, even back here in the States, has self-contained power, video uplink, uh, uh, internet capability, telephones, video games, place to watch movies, except this can be transported under a helicopter. And we've uh -huh. sent the first three of these over to Afghanistan to forward operating bases over there to bring a touch of home. Are they a big hit? They are a huge hit. Yeah. The guys use them a lot. They, yes, they do. Absolutely. So how do they work? I mean, it, I, I would imagine one of the most popular things about this in this, this air-conditioned comfort near a forward operating base is the ability to, to actually make contact with home from the far reaches of the battlefield, it's, it's which is one quite of the, novel. It's one of the most powerful things that we can do for service members and, frankly, for their families back home. Is to, is to create a bridge between the two. Mm -hmm. We do that with USO in a box in those centers. We also do it, we have uh, regular uh, static USO centers mm -hmm. uh, all over the uh, Southwest Asia and the, and the Persian Gulf. These are fairly and new, aren't they? They, they are, uh, some are newer than others. We've been in, in Afghanistan really since 2003. Uh -huh. uh, we've added centers in Iraq here just in the last year or so. Uh, but in those centers, we've gone in and established our own private internet and telephone network and we're now through those centers uh, producing about a hundred and fifty thousand free phone calls a month home for troops. Are these video links as well? They are also capable of doing video links in fact we had a recent story at Camp Buring in Kuwait of a soldier that was able to be with his wife in the delivery room he was sitting in the USO center in a private office back in the back and she was in the delivery home back home that's remarkable because the USO always, the, the, the mission originally with the USO was to take a little taste of home to the battlefield. And now you actually can take a piece of the battlefield back home. You can get the soldier who's on the front lines in direct contact with his family. He can, he can have an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball chat. It's, it's quite a remarkable thing that technology has done, isn't it? You, you made the point at the outset. Uh, the USO is constantly looking for ways to adapt uh -huh. to meet needs. These multiple deployments have made it tough on families. So we're constantly looking for ways to bring them together. We have another program called United Through Reading. Uh, this year, uh, around the world, troops will be able to go into a USO center, read a children's book, and be video recorded while they're reading that book. We send the, the DVD and the brand new book home to the kids. Uh, we'll do 40,000 of those this year. How do you fund all this? USO is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we are a congressionally chartered nonprofit, but we're really America's USO. A million and a half donors that give to the USO, the average gift is about $35. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of corporations that provide support as well. That's really our lifeblood. You are not a government agency. We are not a government agency. That's exactly right. right. How can people, before, I want to talk about this magazine, but how can people, if they're, they're inspired to give something to the USO, how can they do it? How can they contact the you? The best way to reach out is to, on the internet, go to uso.org, uso.org, uh -huh. and they'll find ways there. They can click and find a, a nearby USO where they might decide that they'd like to volunteer. They can also find ways to donate in different programs that they can support. Right, tell us about this, uh, the On Patrol. The magazine I've, we've been sitting here. We're making a picture of this. This this is a brand new magazine. This is uh, their first two issues. It's a quarterly publication. It's the USO's magazine, but it's not really about the USO. This gives us a chance to tell the American people the stories of service and sacrifice mm -hmm. of our troops and their families, mm -hmm. and the many people and organizations that are doing great things to help support them. Now you guys still do take stars on tour of the battlefields, don't you? Absolutely. Is that still a big hit? We'll do 60 or 70 USO tours a year. It produces anywhere between 400 and 500 performances and events almost every single day of the year. There are celebrities traveling and entertaining troops somewhere in the world, and it's still a big part of what we do. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks an awful lot for it. Thank you. Sloan Gibson, President and CEO of the USO. Still ahead as we continue, she has the move.